Okay, so you've done this lab. You have graft pressure and volume. And Boyle's law, who, you know, Boyle was a scientist, he kept uh, the three things that can affect a gas. He kept what constant? Temperature constant. So that he could only look at pressure and volume. And essentially, you've got a balloon in front of you, and it has a pressure and it has a volume. And he said, hey, what happens if I squish the volume into half the size? What happened to the pressure? It increases, right? So what happens if you squish the volume into a third of the size? Does pressure increase by? What's the pressure increase by? Three times the size. Do you see that? And actually, if I decrease the volume by dividing it by two, pardon me, if I decrease the volume by dividing it by two or a factor of one half, divided by two is the same thing as timesing it by one half, what would you think would happen to the pressure? Well, let's just do one third first. What happened to the pressure? It increased by three times. What do you think would happen if I took the volume and I put it in half? Would the pressure increase or decrease, first of all? Increase. increase. And how much do you think by? Two. Yeah by a factor of two. And that's why you've got this linear line. Okay? Because a half was a th uh, times two and a third was times three and you could decrease the volume by one twelfth and what do you think would happen to the pressure? It would increase by twelve times. But one twelfth doesn't equal twelve. Would you agree with that? And one half doesn't equal two. So I can't have this equal sign in here. I have to have a different sign. I have to have a proportional to sign. That's math 20. That's math 20. So a proportional to sign. It means that they can't equal because 0.5 does not equal 2. So I can't have an equal sign. But they are related to each other. Okay? And in fact, this is called inversely proportional, and that's why we took the inverse volume. They are inversely proportional. 1 divided by V is proportional to P. They are inversely proportional. If I increase one, the other one decreases. By a factor of 2, by a factor of 2, or 1 half, because it's inverse. Does that make sense? Okay. So inversely proportional to. So that was the first thing that you kind of played the numbers with, but probably didn't realize that pattern, but that's okay. But you should have in, uh, realized that this gave you a linear line. The other one didn't. Okay? So then you were asked to calculate the slope of that linear line. So once you've found your line of best fit, which we've talked about is not exactly connecting the most dots, but rather the height of the dots above equaling the height of the dots below. Once you calculate the slope by going rise over run of that graph, it gave you a constant, which they called k. Remember that makes sense? And then you also had to calculate k a second way, according to the question four here, where they said multiply these, p's and b's, and you get approximately the same number. Oops, those are all k's, by the way. Approximately the same number every single time, right? And so that is a oh, constant as well. So how many of you have used constants already in some kind of math or science capacity? A constant. But you never know where they come from. This is where they come from. Every situation, right? I take a balloon, I look at its volume, I look at its pressure, I multiply those two numbers together, I get 153. I squish the, the balloon, I take its new pressure, I multiply that volume and that pressure together, I get 153. Every time I do it for every situation, I get the same multiplication. Okay? So the question here asks, in this conclusion, which method do you think is better, taking the average of all of these k's or taking the average of this k here? Now, to be quite honest, I'm not bothered what you put down. But I do want you to understand this. There will be, first of all, they're both averages. Everybody get that? 
that this slope is an average of your dots, and this is an average of all of the data. If there is an outlier, do you know what I mean when I say outlier? On your graph, right? There you go, there's an outlier. It'd be easier to spot on your graph than it would be in this table. 153, 155. Ooh, is that an outlier? But if you can see how far it is from the line, that's a better visual outlier. Does that make sense? So that might be part of your argument, that a graph is better for calculating your K because you can see an outlier. I'd be happy with that answer. Okay? That this is a better a value of K. By the way, slope is better. Okay, that's the real answer. But I could see you could argue that this is better because you take all the data points and that you might make a mistake with your line of best fit. Right? There's a bit more margin for error about your skewed data here. So I could see how you would argue that. But providing that you've done this correctly and this correctly, this is the best. Because it definitely shows you, number one, outliers, and number two, it takes away any anomalies. Any like line, any like a little bit too, vol like the volume was measured a little bit too, whatever. Okay? Okay. And is Boyle's constant the same for every gas? Yeah, if I fill my balloon with air and I squish it in half, the pressure will double. If I fill the balloon with helium and I squish it in half, the pressure will double. So the K value remains the same for every single gas. Okay? Why? Because every gas behaves the same way with the same properties. Right? Do you have those answers written down? Because your pen should be going like a mad if you don't. Okay, I'll give you two seconds to write that down. Leave her alone so she can write. She's asking me a different question. Okay. I'd really like to move on. Can I move on? Got ten seconds. Multiplying that pressure and that K, that volume. So let's pretend this is my balloon. It's a 105 liter, one, I mean 1.5 liter balloon. And it has a pressure of 103 right now. Okay? If I squish that balloon into a third, this is my new volume. Everybody agree with that? And this is my new pressure. So to keep these, I'm going to call that pressure one, situation one, volume one of situation one. This would be the second situation and the second situation. Yes? And if I take that pressure and I multiply that by that volume, I get a constant. And if I multiply these two, I get the same constant. Agreed? The same number. Does it matter what that number is? No, actually, because hmm, I can take my pressure one and my volume one. They will multiply to be K. And these guys will also multiply to be K. So P2 and V2 will also multiply to be K. Do I even care what K is? Not really. I could exclude that. And now all of a sudden, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So you have your graphs in front of you. Could you predict for me what the pressure would be when the volume was not chopped into a third, but rather chopped into half. So what's 1.5 divided by 2? 0.75. Right? Do you have 0.75 in your data? No. Could you use your line of best fit to find the approximate pressure? 
Yeah? So you go to your line, you find on your data point 1.7, you work your way up, you look up the pressure. Agreed? Yes? In fact, actually, this is 1 divided by volume, so you'd have to find 1 divided by 0 0.75 and then look it up. And you are estimating on your graph. Everybody okay with that? Everybody's done this in junior high, right? Or estimate what it will be in the future. That's quite a common one if you continue your line of best fit. I'm going to just do the same thing. And you can do this because the line of this is the same. The slope is the same. The constant is the same. So if P1 and V1 will equal P2 and V2, but instead of talking about it chopping my balloon into a third, what if I chop it into half? Well, here I have the pressure of 1 is 103 kilopascals, and that multiplied with the 1.50 liters. Everybody okay with those two numbers, where I got them from? And now I'd like to know what you would predict the pressure to be when the volume was 0 0.75 liters. Do you see this? And actually, if I chop the volume in half, the pressure should double. We already said that at the beginning of this, right? So my volume should be about 200. Chop the volume in half, pressure should double, the, volume, the pressure should be about 200. Agreed? Well, let's do the math. Grab your calculator, start tapping, tapping. Abby? Um, yeah, I got 206. Oh, 206. Does that sound about right? And it, it, it exists because they equal a constant. So number one, this is how you get constants. Number two, this is why we like constants. Because I can have these two situations, two different situations, equal each other. If I take my balloon and I squish its volume in half, I will get double the pressure. There is the proof. What's the units of that pressure? Kilopascals. kilopascals. Notice how the liters cancelled out? And now I'm left with kilopascals. Oops, whoops, wrong way. Kilopascals. Do you see that? Oh, the camera can't. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. All right, so uh, my last point before you get going is this. Everybody see how the leaders cancel out? Everybody understand that that's just a variable in algebra, and the L's canceled. Let's say my question, my situation, wasn't scientific notation, or, um, system international, SI units, but rather this guy decided, because boils, long, long time ago, probably measured his in either atmospheres or millimeters of mercury. Now, what are my units? Liters still cancel out. What are my units here? Atmospheres are left. Okay, so it actually doesn't matter what my units are for the pressure. Atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, right, we talked about that on day one of this package. There are three different units, and I expect you to know all of them because I can equate them, I can put them into these formulas. Does that make sense? Any questions? So, on the next bit of the package then, is some practice on P1V1 equals P2V2. Make sure you're thinking about your significant digits, and make sure you're thinking about your units. You must show me all your work, like you would in normal math class. And then, if you finish that quickly, you can go on to Charles's Law and Charles's Law graph. And now that you know what you're doing for graphs, because I've just handed you back Boyle's Law, I will mark this graph out of 10. Have they plotted all the data points? Have they got a good title? Have they labeled their axes properly? Have they got a good scale? Is it more than half a page?
5 out of 5. Okay? So this lab you're going to be handing in, you should be done by the end of next class. So for those of you that are on the biology field trip, who are you? Oh good, we're all here tomorrow then.